Hi there, I'm going to cover some dynamic fundamentals that are necessary for students taking Physics C materials such as how to draw your FBDs, solving questions that involve ramps, pulleys, hanging masses, and mass on a spring. So let's get started. The relevant equations for dynamics really includes only acceleration is equal to your net force over mass and your force of friction is less than or equal to some constant times the absolute value of your normal force. There are other equations that include force, but I will talk about them in later units. Let's talk about this equation first. If let's say you have an object on a plane and it's going to the right, some velocity to the right. Drawing your FBD, you always have the force of gravity pulling down on the object. And if it's on a surface, hence if the object's not levitating, you will have a normal force that is equal to the sum of all the downward forces. And the only downward force we have on this object is gravity. Your force of friction is always going to be in the opposite direction of your velocity. There are only two cases or two values for force of friction. Your force of friction is equal to zero if you see the word smooth in your problem. If you see that the word smooth is used for your surface, your force of friction is equal to zero. If not, your force of friction is equal to mu f of n. And in this case, because we're on a flat surface, your normal force is equal to your force of gravity. Mu f of g, which is equal to mu m g. But that's only the case when you have a flat surface. We'll talk about ramps later. Another common question you will get, usually for the multiple choice, are several blocks. And they're all connected by a string in between them. And let's say that you apply a force and it pulls these masses together. Let's say you apply a 28 Newton force to the left. Let's say block one is four kilograms, block two is two kilograms, and block three is one kilogram. This is all on a surface. And let's say that the surface is smooth. So that means your force of friction is equal to zero. Let's say you were asked, what is the force of tension between block two and three? The first thing you do is solve for acceleration. So let's use our equation sum of all the forces equals to mass times acceleration. Because all these blocks are accelerating at the same rate, so the A is same for all these blocks, we can simply just rewrite the equation as so with 28 newtons is as our force 
and the sum of all these masses, which is going to be four plus two plus one kilogram. So 28 newtons divided by seven kilograms will give us four meters per second squared. Now one very important note, we still wanna keep our directions with our vectors. So everything point to the left should be considered negative. So all of our blocks are accelerating at four meters per second to the left. Second thing you wanna do is draw your FBDs. So let's take this block. Okay, so the four kilogram block has this 20 newton force pulling it to the left. We also have the force of tension coming here. We also have our force of gravity and our normal force. However, because this is still on the plane, and it's not levitating, our F of N is equal to our F of G. Therefore, those cancel out and we do not need to worry about that. So let's consider this as F of T1. Now let's look at the second block. Because this is a cable between these two blocks, we know that these are gonna have the same exact forces, just in opposite directions. F of T1, and then we have also another cable pulling it back, F of T2. And for our last diagram, we have just the force of T2 pulling on the block. Again, we do have normal and gravity acting on this block. However, they do cancel each other out and I'm not going to draw them. So, first thing you wanna do is sum of all the forces in this block is equal to 28 newtons to the left plus F of T1 to the right. And we know that this equation is also equal to the net force. So we can simply write this as mass times acceleration. The mass of this block is four kilograms. So let's write that to the left or four kilograms. And the acceleration of these blocks we solved in the previous portion of the problem is minus four to the left. So we can solve for F of T1 as 12 newtons. Then we move to this block. So we know that we have 12 newtons pulling to the left, plus some sort of tension pulling the block to the right. Mass is of two kilograms, correct? And the acceleration is negative four. So when we solve this, we get F of T2 is equal to four newtons. And lastly, the only force that is pulling on this block is F of T2. Therefore, and its mass is of one, and its acceleration is of negative four. So that means F of T2 should equal to four newtons to the left. So you see how we were able to solve this problem. Now, as you can see, that these are different values. But again, this negative value is just representing direction. So the question most likely will ask the magnitude of the tension between block two and three. Next. 
Let's do an example. Let's say we have some sort of V of t is equal to 4t minus 6. And a common question they'll ask you, given that they'll give you some velocity, what is f acted upon the object that's going at some velocity if the mass is equal to two kilograms. You know from your equation that force is equal to ma, but you're given velocity. But you should know from your kinematics equations that acceleration is equal to dv over dt. So if you take the derivative of this function, you will get four. This is very, very common. So four times two times four gives you eight newtons. So another equation to memorize is force is equal to mass dv over dt. Now there are usually four types of problems that you have using FBDs. We have a mass on a ramp, mass is on pulley, hanging mass, or mass on a spring. So let's go ahead and dive into what to do when you have a mass on a ramp. So let me go ahead and copy this over here. Step one, you wanna draw your FBD starting with FG. And this is always straight down. So let's do that. FG. Then you are going to draw your normal force, which is always perpendicular to your surface. I'm gonna represent that in green. So it'll look like this. This is your F of N. Then you're gonna draw all other forces. So let's assume that we have some sort of cable that's pulling on this mass, and this velocity is going this way. That being the case, that means you need to draw two other forces, your force of tension, which is always up the cable, and your force of friction, which is always against the direction of your velocity. Okay, so up the cable for force of tension and against velocity for your force of friction. Now, this ramp has some sort of angle at which it's sloped at. And this makes things considerably harder. So the first step, or I guess the fourth step, is to rotate your FBD by this theta. So that means we are going to rotate this FBD by theta. We're going to do it so that this incline will now be flat. So that means redrawing the block to look like this as if it's on a flat surface. So your f of n will be pointed straight up 
your force of tension will be pointed straight to the right. Your force of friction made straight to the left. And your force of gravity, which was previously straight down, is now rotated to be slanted, and it's rotated by theta. So, next step is to split your F of G, the force of gravity, into its X and Y components. By the way, we also want to keep the convention of our coordinate plane. Of all forces that are going to the right or up are positive, and all forces to the left and down are negative. I'm going to redraw my force of gravity here. So its y component, because this side is adjacent to theta, is going to be my vector f of g cosine theta. And because my side is opposite of theta, for the x component, it's equal to f of g sine theta. And if you need more help on understanding when to use cosine or sine, I would suggest watching my first video on math fundamentals. Okay, so next, usually they'll ask you to solve for the normal force or you need to solve for it. Your F of n is equal to all downward forces. So in the previous problem, the only force that was acting downwards in the, again, vertical direction is our force of gravity. So our normal force is equal to our force of gravity. However, now we're on a ramp and our force of gravity is at an angle. So our normal force is only going to care about the forces that are acting in the vertical direction. And since force of tension and force of friction are solely in the x direction, we do not care about those. So our normal force is equal to F of G cosine theta. Usually they'll ask you for the acceleration of your block. To solve for the acceleration, you need to solve for your net force. I stress this a lot. You only want to work with the forces that are acting in the x direction on its own and solve for the sum of the forces in the y direction on its own. So let's do y direction force, sum of all the forces in the y direction. Well, we have F of n and it's positive because it's pointed up. And we also have F of G in the Y direction. However, it's pointed downwards, so we should subtract that portion. Well, this cancels each other out, which is good because again, the block is not levitating. Now let's sum all the forces in the x direction. We have force of tension pointing to the right, so we're gonna keep that positive. We have force of friction, which is going to the left, so we're going to negate that. And we also have force of gravity. Again, that is going in the negative direction, so we're gonna subtract force of gravity in the x direction. So that's gonna give us F of T minus mu F of N, the force of friction equation, remember, is mu f of n minus our component 
of gravity in the x direction. And now we have the equation for f of n, don't we? So this is equal to f of t minus mu fg cosine theta minus fg sine theta. All right, so your net force is equal to, using Pythagorean's theorem, the squared sum of your x and y. And in this case, and in most cases, your f of y is equal to zero. So that means your net force is equal to your net forces in the x direction. And to get acceleration, you just divide by its mass. Now, I also want to cover how to solve problems when you have masses on a pulley. Let's assign this left block as block one and our right block as block two. And let's assume that the mass of block one is less than the mass of block two. So the first thing we want to do is draw our FBDs for both blocks. So let's draw the first block. Now the second block. The force of gravity will be applied to both blocks. So your force of gravity for block two should be of greater magnitude than the force of gravity acting on block one. Then each block has a tension force being applied to it. So since we know that these are of the same cable and the mass of the cable along with the wheel is equal to zero. The force of tension for both block one and block two are equal to one another. So let's just label that as F of T. So drawing them would be of the same magnitude. All right, so step two, you will usually need to solve for the acceleration of the system. So by common sense, you can gather that mass two, because it's heavier than mass one, will accelerate downwards. Again, Fg would then be greater than Ft. And in this case, acceleration will accelerate upwards. The lighter mass will move up to the pulley. So for step two, you're gonna write your system of equations for F. So let's sum all the forces acting on block one first. So we have F of T, which is going up, so that's positive. Then we have F of G one, which is going in the negative direction. And we know that the sum of the forces is also equal to mass times acceleration. So let's write that. And acceleration is going up, so we'll keep this positive. Then we also have the sum of the forces acting on block two. So we have f of t going up, f of g 
going down. And we have mass two times acceleration. However, acceleration for this block is going to be in the opposite direction. And as we mentioned before, the magnitude of these accelerations are going to be equal to one another because they are connected by the same string or cable. So now we're going to use our system's equations. So that means that we need to cancel out one of these variables to be able to determine or solve for acceleration. We see that we have a common variable f of t. So let's subtract these two equations from one another. So f of t minus f of t will give you zero. Negative fg1 subtract negative fg2 will be plus fg2. And then we have the equal sign, mass one of a minus negative, so it would be positive, mass two times a. We can factor out the acceleration and you will get Fg2 minus Fg1. So your acceleration is equal to Fg2 minus Fg1 all over mass one plus mass two. It can also reduce this down further because we know that f of g is equal to mass times gravity. So this has a common denominator of gravity. So we can factor this out to m2 minus m1 all over m1 plus m2 times gravity. Awesome. So let's move on to the next type of problem, which is usually a hanging mass. Or usually this is most common for multiple choice questions where you have a mass in equilibrium. And what that means is that your net force in both y and x direction is equal to zero. All right, so let me draw. An example problem. So we have some sort of mass. And we have a cable that is Pulling up in this diagonal, another cable that's completely horizontal. And we want to know what the forces are being applied to this block. The first thing to do is to, again, draw your FBD. So we know that gravity is acting upon this mass. We also have the force of tension acting upon this block. Let's label this F of T2. We also have the force of tension acting in the horizontal direction FT1. Second step is to break all diagonal forces into x and y components. You should always be doing this if you ever see a diagonal. So let me first specify what this theta is right here. Let's make theta equal to 30 degrees. So F of T2 being split up into its X and Y components 
given that the degree is 30 degrees. So it's F of T2 in the Y direction is equal to the force of tension times, this is opposite, so sine 30 degrees. And this is in the X direction. And this side is adjacent to the angle. So F of T2 cosine 30 degrees. All right, so now we have broken up this diagonal vector into its X and Y components. Next step is to write your sum of the forces in the X direction and the sum of the forces in the Y direction. So our sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to FT of one in the left direction F of T2, the X component, and that's all the forces acting in the X direction. So this is the same as saying this. Now sum all your forces in the Y direction. We have F of T2 in the Y direction, and it's pointed upwards, so that's positive. And we have the force of gravity pulling the mass down, and it's going to be negative. So we can simplify this to this equation. Next, you're going to say, your equations to zero. Because we know that this mass is not moving, the velocity is equal to zero, the displacement's equal to zero, so its acceleration is also equal to zero. Therefore, the, because we have mass times acceleration, acceleration is equal to zero, our force is equal to zero. So we'll have some of the forces in the x direction, equal to FT2 cosine 30 degrees minus FT1, which is equal to zero. And you can easily tell then that the force of tension in this cable is going to equal to the X component of the tension in this cable. And the sum of the forces in Y will then be FT2 sine 30 minus FG equal to zero. So then you can see that the Y component of this cable is equal to the force of gravity. Now let's talk about masses on a spring. We have the equation F is equal to negative K delta X. Now let's represent what this means with a diagram. Let's assume that we have the spring attached with some mass. And then afterwards, the string gets compressed. Therefore, this represents our delta x. Because we can see the change in displacement is negative, the spring is getting compressed, this is technically negative, not the constant portion. That is why we have the negative sign in front of force. However, if the spring and actually the spring extends, this is a positive value. Therefore, when you write this equation, force should equal positive k times x. 
I will say that the force acting upon the block are all in this direction. It is just the displacement that negates this equation. Another equation that I highly suggest you memorize is force is also equal to the negative derivative of potential energy. And if you look on your equation sheet, the force acted by the spring is equal to the derivative of the potential energy of the spring with respect to x. So this means the derivative of your potential energy, if you look on your equation sheet, is equal to 1 half k delta x squared, which is equal to negative k delta x. So when you compress the spring, you have potential energy. And when you extend out the spring, you have kinetic energy. And your force is equal to the derivative of kinetic energy, which is also equal to work. And we'll talk a little bit more about this concept in the later units. Last topic I want to talk about is drag or air resistance. All objects that are falling have the force of gravity being applied to it. However, not all objects are made of the same material. If you drop a bowling ball and a feather, they will not land at the same time. Only that happens in a vacuum or if you have a very short distance. But because a feather has more air resistance that acts upon it in the opposite direction, it takes longer to hit the floor. Now, usually we don't care about drag. However, if it does specify in the problem, it's common to have one multiple choice question on air resistance or drag. I would have this step-by-step -step solution memorized. So your sum of the forces is equal to your drag force, which is pointed up, the force of gravity, which is pointing down, which is equal to ma. Now there will be a time at which f drag is equal to fg because the ball or the object will fall at a constant velocity. If velocity is constant, that means your acceleration is equal to zero. Whenever your V becomes constant after a certain amount of time, that's called your terminal velocity. So let's equate these two equations, your drag equation or your air resistance equation is equal to KV. And your force of gravity is equal to mg. Therefore, your terminal velocity occurs when V is equal to mg over k, the constant that describes your air resistance. All right, that's all I have on dynamics. If you have any questions 
or concerns, please let me know. If there was any topics that I didn't cover, please comment below. Thank you so much.